My name is Zach Ochaga, and I'm the lead pastor of C6 Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and joining us online today to be a part of this service and the teaching for today. And I am persuaded, I am convinced that this will be a blessing in your life and in your relationships. If you are joining us for the very first time online in Sioux Falls and you've never been to our in-person services, would you mind just filling out the connection card online, letting us know that you are here today? I would love to know that you are here today and love to just say hi to you in an email. Before we go into the teaching for today, would you join us in worship of God as we sing this song, which will be led by a friend of mine, Doug Hurt. <laughs> Savior say, thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Lord now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Jesus. 
Welcome back. Once more, thanks for choosing to be with us today. I I'm glad, I'm thrilled that you decided to be a part of this service today. We've been in a series, we've started a series titled Tune Up Your Relationships. Tune Up Your Relationships. And last week, we looked at Be Present. And today, we want to look at Be Kind be kind sometimes relationships can be messy but they don't have to be <laughs> as messy as they can be many times you know there are times that i have said things that hurt holly holly was not happy you know with a comment that i made or a remark that I may, and I, and I had to apologize and say I'm sorry. I, sometimes I didn't know <laughs> it would come across the way it went across to her or came across to her. You know, and I would say, hey, I'm sorry. I did not mean that. I, I did not mean to hurt you. You know, and sometimes with my kids, too, I, I make comments or I say something that apparently hurts them. They're not happy with. And I apologize and say, hey, I'm sorry. I did not, you know, that was not my intention. And I'm learning to make sure that I am kind. I'm kind to Holly. And I'm kind to my kids. Because kindness helps relationships thrive. Kindness helps relationships succeed. And the kindness that we show to strangers in a restaurant or, or in, in a grocery store, we need to show that kind of kindness to the people that matter to us the most, the people, the people that we live with, you know, day in, day out. We need to show them that kind of kindness on a daily basis. I'm sure you agree with me that sometimes you know, the people that we're closest to are the ones that can hurt us the most or are the ones that we can hurt the most. It, it does not have to be that way. It does not have to be that way. Many times I read about teenagers, you know, who would speak so rudely and disrespectfully and unkindly to their parents. And, and, and they, would say, they would say that they could speak like that to their parents because they knew that their parents would always love them. It doesn't have to be that way. God does not want us to have to speak in unkind ways. God does not want us to treat the people in our lives in unkind ways. Last week I shared with you, you know, stories and examples of, of certain marriages, you know. Some succeeded, some did not succeed. Some ended in divorce and some did not. So you have a couple with no infidelity in their marriage, no infi zero infidelity in their marriage, and yet they divorce. They go their separate ways. Why? Because they were absent in their marriage. Why? Why would a marriage with no infidelity not work? Why would a marriage with no infidelity break up? Because there are other things that are important to a relationship that we're absent, which is one of the things that we're going to look at today. On the other hand, you have couples who had infidelity in their marriage. Either the husband had an affair or the wife had an affair and, and they got to know about it. You know, the other got to know about it. And these are, you know, uh, several marriages. But they did not divorce. They were intentional and worked at their relationship, and it succeeded. Why would a marriage that had infidelity not break up and succeed, and another with zero infidelity break? 
I, I believe that we will see some principles today that touch on kindness that would help us understand how such things happen and help us protect the relationships that matter to us. The lockdown uh, the lo as a result of uh, COVID in, 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 t in, in 2020 revealed to us that relationships are the most important things. It revealed to us that all the things that we celebrated as very important, whether it was our job and going to the office, you know, for uh, uh, 15 or more hours a day, whether it was the big games that we watched and all of those things and, and all, all of the recreation that we went out to, it, COVID and the shutdown showed us that relationships are what matter most. And, and I believe that God wants us to, to, to recover what we may have lost in the area of our relationships. Now let's see what God has to say about this in Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to read 29 through 31. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Now we're looking at the topic, be kind. That's what we're looking at today. We, we want to be kind in our relationships. We want to be kind to the people that matter to us. You want to be kind to your spouse. You want to be kind to your kids. You want to be kind to your family. You want to be kind to your friends. You want to be kind to the community of believers that you find yourself in. I want to share with us ways that we can, we can be kind. I want to share with us, I want to suggest from this scripture, this passage that we have read, ways that we can demonstrate kindness, ways that we can be kind. In verse 29, Paul says, Do not let any corrupting talk come out of your mouth. So the first way that you can be kind is this. Build, build up with your words and not tear down. Build up with your words and not tear down. Sometimes we say the meanest things to the people that we love. Sometimes we say things that, that are not nice. Sometimes we can be harsh with our words. Sometimes we can be very critical with our words. And when I, when I say critical, it, 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 we're not talking about complaining about bad behavior. We're talking about pointing at someone as the problem rather than the behavior that is the problem. If we're going to be kind, we have to, be, we have to learn to be kind with the words that we use. You want to say things that help encourage people. You want to say things that help build people up. There are people that have destroyed and torn down their relationships by the choice of words they've used. And so Paul here writing to the church at Ephesus says, you guys should learn to build each other up with your words. Now, if you were to take a quiz, if your spouse was to, to take a quiz and answer the question, my husband or my wife builds me up with the words that he or she uses, what do you think the answer would be? If you asked yourself, what would your answer be? Have you been building up 
with your words. You know, words are, are so powerful. Words can, 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 can wound. Words can hurt deeply. Words can penetrate the hearts of people, bringing about injury in their hearts. At the same time, words can change the countenance from negative to positive. Words can, can heal. Words can be, can, can be so positive that can lift up someone from, from, from the hole of depression. Use your words to build up. The second way that you can demonstrate kindness, that will help you demonstrate kindness, that will help you be kind, it's an unlikely one. I mean, it's one that you, you may not have thought about, but very important and very critical, and it is this. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit within you. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit within you. Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus and he said, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. That word grieve is to make sad. You know, in relationships, when someone that is a stranger to you does something that displeases you, usually you'll be angry, not sad. Sadness happens in an instance where you know the person or you care deeply about the person and, and you're disappointed in the person's behavior, it makes you sad. Sometimes we're mad, but it's more like mad sad. Now, the, the Holy Spirit is meant to be a close relationship. And so he, he gets sad when we behave in certain ways. He gets sad when we treat people unkindly. He gets sad when we do things that God clearly does not want us to do. If you are going to be kind, one of the things that you must do is to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit, when, when you have developed and, and cultivated your relationship with the Holy Spirit and you, you have grown in sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, you will know when he is sad. And when you, when, when you realize that he's sad, you want to immediately make amends because that is a relationship that you want to thrive. There are things that, 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 that I do because I know it will please God. There are things that I try hard not to do by the grace of God because I know doing them would not please God. So I want to encourage you to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. This is, look, you, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ and you've put your faith in Jesus Christ, what it means is that you have the Spirit of God within you. You have the Holy Spirit within you. And the Bible says that He has been given to you as a seal for the day of redemption. Uh, it's, it means that you have been branded by the, by, by, with the Holy Spirit for the final day of redemption. Now, having such a, an important relationship in your life, you are not to grieve him. You are not to make him sad. So if, if, I, if I talk to Holly in ways that are not kind, the Holy Spirit is sad. If I talk to my kids in ways that are not kind, the Holy Spirit is sad. If I talk to the church, C6 Church, you know, in ways that are not kind, the Holy Spirit is sad. When I treat people in unkind ways, the Holy Spirit is sad. When you begin to be conscious of the fact that you have the Spirit of God within you and that He has, he has emotions, He can be sad and He can be happy. And, and you, you, you begin to understand that the way you behave either pleases him or makes him sad. You would be careful how you treat others and make sure you are kind to them. The third thing that I want to share with you that would help you be kind in your relationships is this. Get rid of the poison. Get rid of the poison. There are things that poison relationships. There are things that frustrate kindness. And, and, and Paul makes a list of these things in verse 31. He says that we should let go of or put away or stop, depending on the, the version that you look at, 
and he makes a list of them. Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, slander, and malice. If you are mad all the time, if you are bitter all the time, if you are angry all the time, if you are always thinking of ways to do evil and to hurt others, it hurts your relationships. It hurts your relationships. I remember uh, a, a, a prominent pastor here, here in the United States who, 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 whose son said to someone, I do not know why my dad is always angry. And he said that was the one statement that got him to change. That was the one statement that got him to change. When you are, when you are bitter and angry, you don't treat your loved ones with kindness. It has a way of poisoning the relationships that matter most to you. And so the Bible teaches, get rid of that. Get rid of bitterness. Get rid of anger. It is true you'll be hurt. It is true you'll be hurt. As a matter of fact, if you're into any kind of relationship, you will be hurt. The question is, are you going to let yourself be bitter? Are you going to let yourself be angry all the time? Are you going to going to let yourself to, to, to have wrath? Are you going to let yourself to, 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 to be yelling out of anger? Are you going to let yourself to want to just think evil towards those people? That's not what God wants for you. That's not what God wants for me. We must get rid of the poison. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of a story uh, James Bain is his name. He, he, he was 19 years old in his sister's house watching TV when a nine-year-old boy was pulled out of his house, taken to a basketball court, and, 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 was, and was raped, kidnapped, and raped on that, on, on that court. And when the boy described who it was to his mom or to a relative, you know, that, that, that attacked him, the relative believed it was James Bain. And, and James Bain was arrested, even though there wasn't a definitive, you know, way of proving that he did it. He was arrested, and he was sentenced to prison for life. He was sentenced to prison for life in 1975 in the state of Florida. In the year 2001, he, he, began to, he began to seek DNA testing because whoever it was that committed that act against the boy, you know, left some evidence on the boy's underwear that could be, could be tested. And it was in 2005 that he got help. And after the test was done, it was definitively proven that James Bain was not the one that committed the crime. And James Bain was released from prison after spending 35 years of his life in prison. And he made his first ever call to his 77-year-old grandma saying, he's out. And he said, he was not bitter because he's got God. 35 years in prison for what you did not do. It's enough to make anybody bitter. It's enough to make anybody bitter. But this guy was not bitter because of God. Because of God. Because if he's bitter, even true, he's been hurt. True, you know, there's been injustice in his life. But if he's bitter, it reduces the quality of his life. It reduces the quality of his life. Friends, you don't want to be bitter. It's poisonous. It's poisonous. Rather, you want to be kind. You want to be kind. 
in order for you to be kind to your spouse, in order for you to be kind to your kids, in order for you to be kind to the people around you, you must get rid of the poisons of, of, of bitterness, of wrath, of anger, of clamor, of slander, and of malice. The fourth thing that I want you to, to, I want to show you from this passage that would help you to be kind is this. Develop a tender heart develop a tender heart when, when, when in verse 32 Paul says be kind tender hearted developing a tender heart means that you are moved by the struggles you are moved by the pain of others you are concerned about them and you want to do something about them you are sympathetic towards their struggles so, so someone once told me, he said, when you want to get married, make sure you don't get married to a mean woman. That's what he told me. <laughs> because sometimes, some, sometimes believers, Christians, followers of Christ are mean. And sometimes we are mean to the people that we love. We can change that behavior. Through the help of the Holy Spirit and sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, we can change that behavior. With the help of God, we can change that behavior. And this is why Paul was writing these words to the church at Ephesus, because there's hope. We can change behaviors that are not kind. Develop a tender heart towards the people that you are in relationship with. And very quickly here, I want to move on to the fifth. And the fifth suggestion from this scripture to help us to be kind is this. Be like Christ and forgive. Be like Christ and forgive. Paul goes on to say, in verse 32, he goes on to say, he says, be kind, tenderhearted, and forgiving, even as God in Christ Jesus has forgiven, forgiven you. I, in other words, he's saying, the reason that you should forgive is that you have been forgiven by God. The reason that you forgive is because you have been forgiven by God. And another th thing he, he was saying is this. To the extent to which you have been forgiven by God is the extent to which you should forgive others. What does that mean? Does forgiveness mean that, that you don't call a sin a sin? Does forgiveness mean that you don't call a wrong a wrong? No. Actually, forgiveness has to name it and say, this is what has happened, this is what has done in order to be able to forgive. And if not, what would you be forgiven? One of the reasons that we find it hard to forgive is because we do not appreciate how God in Christ Jesus has forgiven us. Think about it. The Bible makes us to understand that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so we need it to be forgiven since we have all sinned. The Bible makes us to understand that the wages of sin is death. So because of sin, we die eternally. We die a spiritual death and we die eternally. And, 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 and some of us do not appreciate that we are sinners saved by grace or sinners in need of salvation. When you think about some statements of Jesus Christ, such as if anyone looks at a woman lustfully, that person has committed adultery or sexual immorality in his or her heart, in his heart. Now, is there anybody who has not looked at someone lustfully? So we're already guilty of the sin of adultery or sexual immorality. Jesus goes on to say that if anyone, <laughs> you know, hates his brother, you know, and calls him a fool out of that hatred, that person is a murderer. Boom. That means we're already guilty of murder. 
Have you ever said something that is not the truth? Have you ever lied? We've lied. And so we're liars. Have we ever taken anything that did not belong to us with the intention of not returning it? That is stealing. Now, I'm just giving these as examples to say that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we need the forgiveness of God if we would have a relationship with him, if we would be at peace with him, if we would spend eternity with him. We need him to forgive us. When you understand that you need the forgiveness of God and you have enjoyed the forgiveness of God in your life, then it becomes easier for you to forgive others. And if you are not yet a follower of Jesus Christ and you've not put your faith in Christ, you need his forgiveness. His forgiveness is offered to you. And all you need to do is to put your faith in Jesus Christ. And you will enjoy his forgiveness. So, what are you going to do in very practical ways to show kindness to your spouse and to your family and to the people that matter to you? Start with the words of your mouth. Don't say anything that is not kind. Don't speak in a way that is not kind. Make sure you deal with all the emotional wounds that bring about bitterness and anger in your heart and in your life. Let the Holy Spirit work in you to help you overcome it. Be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Be sensitive to the Spirit of God so you treat people rightly. Develop a tender heart and make sure you forgive. You forgive. You are the chief forgiving officer in your marriage, the chief, chief forgiving officer in your family. You have to keep forgiving. It does not mean you will not place boundaries. You place boundaries. It does not mean you, you pretend that you know sin is not sin or something that is wrong is not wrong, you know. But if you're hurt, you must forgive. You must forgive. I want to encourage you that you are not like the couple that had zero infidelity and yet broke their marriage and yet divorced, partly because they did not show kindness to each other. They did not say please and thank you often. They did not put each other first and figure out ways to help each other. They were not sympathetic towards the struggles of the other. When these things are absent, over several years, distance takes place between the couple and they go like, why do we even need to be married? Why do we even need to be married? When you begin to show kindness to your spouse, and begin to show kindness to members of your family and begin to show kindness to people in your church community. It brings about a thriving rela relationship and it helps you to succeed at those relationships. The most important thing is this. It pleases God. It pleases God. And it's a testimony to the world of what it looks like for a person who truly decides to follow Christ and be like Christ. I pray that your relationships will heal. I pray that your relationships will get better as you practice kindness. For those of you that call C6 home, we know that we, give t we pay our tithes, we give offerings, we make donations to the church because it helps us to be and do all that God has called us to. And it is our, one of our ways of worshiping God. So if you're giving today, all you need to do is to look at uh, the, 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 the address below, look at the, the online site below, and look at the phone number below, and text the word give to that number, 
and you'll be taken to where you can give. For those of you who are our guests, we like to say don't give. Let this teaching, this service be our gift to you. May God bless you. May God do you good. May God show you his favor and empower you by his spirit to live out kindness in all the relationships that matter to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, and see you next week.